Okay, first thing to do, you have to do get try to get the feet so that the toes are in. Use your strap to help. Alright? Then fluoro the hip. Here's a fluoro image. So you're trying to get your needle someplace over the femoral neck, right? On the front of you. You don't necessarily need to go lateral unless you're having a hard time and you want to check depth. The traditional method is to line the needle up and just go straight down over the femoral neck, but that requires you to usually feel for the pulse and maybe try to, to move with your fingers the uh, femoral pulse. You can, usually got to move it over away from the needle. I usually start with the intertrochanteric line and take the needle. As I'm going down, I'm going medial and uh, superior parallel to the femoral neck in this fashion trying to end up someplace over here, all right? So here the patients, you usually get the patient, the techs mark the skin about where they think I want to go in based on what I've taught them in the past. That saves some time. It also let, then lets us clean the area and we got her all draped and ready to go. Okay, so now let's bring the, bring the fluoro down. Start with a little lidocaine, what is 2%? That's one percent epinephrine. One percent lidocaine premixed with epinephrine, and we usually put a little we sodium, put bi bicarb. sodium bicarb. Nine cc's of the lidocaine, one cc of the sodium bicarb. Okay. A little floral. I'm going to get my up here now. I'm going to show the more important to show here than than the skin, but that's about where I'm going to start. All right. So then I make a little just right there, pinching the skin. Get get the skin numb. I usually just go down and get the muscles numb. You don't always have to worry about getting it all the way to the bone at this point. It depends on the size of the patient. Sometimes you'll get it all the way to the bone, sometimes you won't. Then we use a regular 21 gauge spinal needle. Matter of fact, I think we're open, the tray we open is the tray we open when we do lumbar punctures. Alright, back to the same spot. Okay. Now, I don't usually fluoro as I'm doing this, only to check my needle position. See, right there, that's going to be too steep there. So I check my fluoro position and then just go down until I hit bone. So now I'm on bone. Check it here. That should be a good spot. All right. But just because it looks like it's in a good spot doesn't mean it's in that you're in the joint. It depends on the cap, the joint capsule. Sometimes the joint capsule can be very tight, as in like an adhesive capsulitis, and it's like putting the needle between pages in a book. So we're going to inject back to the floral screen. This is oh by the way this is Isoview 300 whatever you want to use. To an extension tubing, we're going to just inject a little bit, and we want to see if it pulls at the needle tip like that, you're not in the joint. You have to then back the needle off and just find a little another position. Sometimes this takes one time, sometimes you might have to do it a dozen times, but you have to get the contrast flowing away from the needle tip to prove that you're in the joint. That one almost wiggle her foot. That one is kind of questionable, it's going away from the needle yeah. tip. We're going to just wiggle the hip a little bit, but it's still, to me, that looks like it's pulling. So we're going to back it off again, okay, and find another spot on the femoral neck. Sometimes it's five seconds, sometimes it's five minutes. There, see that? See the contrast now flowing? That's what you're looking for. Looking for the contrast flows around the femoral neck up towards the femoral head. You don't really need to put a lot of contrast in. It's simply to prove that you're in the joint. Maybe put a little negative pressure on at this point to see if you get joint fluid back. If you do, you can aspirate out as much as you can. It'll give them a little relief. After that, you get your medicine. We use Depomedrol. Uh, and it's 40 milligrams. I think some other places use Kenalog. But Depomedrol, always put the Depomedrol in first. It's mixed to one cc. It's 
Sometimes if you have the needle all the way up against the bone, it's very hard to inject because it's a, once you take the, the stylet out of the needle, the needle tip is flat and you can basically obstruct the tip of the needle. So just back it off just a touch. After the Depamedrol goes in, we put in the sensor cane or Marcane, long acting anesthetic. But by long acting, it's going to, I mean, it's going to wear off by tonight or tomorrow. And I usually put in anywhere from three to five cc's. I always put the Depamedrol in first, since that's the one that's most important, followed by the uh, sensor cane. Okay, needle comes out. Then before we let the patient go, we usually uh, manipulate the leg, wiggle the hip around to try to circulate it. One last thing to remember, that when you're putting the numbing medicine in, uh, you can, uh, it doesn't happen very often, but you could uh, anesthetize the cutaneous nerve that supplies the, the quadriceps muscle. And they might end up with a paralyzed quad until the numbing medicine wears off, in which case they'd be at risk for falling when they got off the table. So always make sure they can do a straight leg raise before you let them bear weight or have them bear weight and make sure they could fit, you know, feel the muscle contract and that's it.